Okay, Jeremy. So um, imagine we're sat in South Africa back in February. Um, what would you have told me your goals for the season were? Well, my goal was always to finish in the top 20. And, well, I would have said that in South Africa, yeah. And those first few events in South Africa, how would you assess your time over there? I was struggling a bit with my game. I mean, I was playing nicely or okay, but due to the big field, it was really tough to make cuts. I, I missed a few really close, so I didn't really get it going on the good results over there, yeah. How do you approach those events in South Africa? Because the guys from that part of the world seem to do a lot better in those events because they're used to the conditions. So as a European, how do you view those? Yeah, it's definitely tough for us. I mean, it's it already starts with the grass, like around the greens, it's really tough for us. We're not used to that grass. And also the tournaments up in Joburg, we, we got to switch to that altitude like in just a few days and these guys kind of know how to deal with it. So that was pretty tough for us, I would say. And then you came back to Europe and really burst into life straight away, fourth in Spain. How did you feel um, kicking off the season in, in Europe? Well, awesome. Those five weeks off really helped as well, so I could use that time to work on my game. And it really clicked from the beginning, so I started really well in Spain, that first event, and I could just keep on going on that. What did you do in those sort of five weeks between South Africa and, and Europe to, to sort of improve and, and get ready for the main part of the season? I was, I was mostly focusing on, on my tee shots, just uh, straighten them out a bit, and that helped me to hit a lot of greens for the next few events and once I had a good putting week uh, I was on top of the leaderboard. A second in, in Scotland, um, how do you reflect on that week looking back? Yeah that was an awesome week so that was for me it was the first time really being in contention at a Challenge Tour event so it was really special for me especially going into the final round with a four shot lead that was new and even though I didn't play mm, great on that final round I really enjoyed it that grind and trying to stay on top and making a birdie on the last was really clutch to get into the playoff. So all in all, it was an awesome week for me. You obviously just missed out that week. What did you sort of learn about yourself that week? Well, I think it kind of helped me. That finish in second helped me for the rest of the season as well. So getting a win was really one of my other goals this season. So And finishing second on that gave me... So I kind of knew I have the, the game to do it and I, I was just staying hungry on that win. In that period, sort of June, July, perhaps into August, it felt like your name was up near the top of the leaderboard every single week. How comfortable did you feel within your own game at that, that point? Really comfortable, yeah. So especially off the tee, I was really good, which I wasn't in the past few years. So that gave me a lot of confidence and also kind of relaxed my game a little bit because I knew if I, if I hit fairways, I'm going to shoot good scores. It's just depending on my putting then. And that gave me a little bit more of a relaxed mood and more confidence. This year you've missed, I think, seven cuts, finished inside the top ten on eight occasions. When you do make the cut, do you feel like you're in a position to challenge every single time? Yeah, I mean, that's the goal, it's because I, I know you got to finish on top to finish in the top 20 in the ranking. So the good thing for me is one, if I'm like 30th or 40th on the leaderboard, I'm just trying to go all in. And that worked out really well this year. So every time I made cuts, I was up there. I rarely finished like in like towards the end of the cut. So that just mentally wise, it was it was a strong part of my game this, this season, yeah. You obviously had a great year. Um, I think you were fourth on the rankings going into Frilford Heath a few weeks ago. Or there or thereabouts. Yeah, something. Um, yeah. How great was the feeling to finally get that win in, in England? Oh, it was awesome. I was, I, and I think I could take all the experience from the whole season into that last round. So I, I was really focusing only on getting that win and not to worry about other scenarios because I was already good in the ranking. So all my focus was on getting that win. You, we spoke about earlier, you missed out in the playoff in Scotland. Um, to then win in a playoff, what were the feelings when you stood on that 18th tee for the, for the final time? Well, I think I, think I went in with, a, like, with an all-in mentality. So I really 
worst case I can finish second again, <laughs> which I didn't really want to, but so uh but it worked out. I mean Max got a Max got a little bit unlucky there and I pulled off a great shot from that wall and just two putted for par, which was enough. But yeah, it was an awesome feeling. Just describe that feeling of, of winning. It's tough to describe. I mean it's like a big big release for me so it's it's all I wanted to to have like my biggest goal in the season and to make it happen on the on the last like regular event was just unreal and also with the spectators they were it was so fun playing in that last group on the last round with all the support and also obviously with Max being like a super nice guy we had a lot of fun out there and it was quite chill one event to go you've obviously still got an awful lot to play for but how would you assess your year if you look back at it as a whole? It was uh, better than I expected. So I, in the beginning of the season, I would have never thought that I'm going to be standing here in Mallorca as number one. So really proud of that. And now I'm just going to enjoy and make the best out of it. And just what would it mean if you were to be crowned number one? You'd be the first Swiss player to, to be number one as well. It would be mean the world to me. I mean, already being the first Swiss player on tour for quite a while now is already a big deal. And yeah, it would be unreal.